Hey and welcome back to another video and in this video we're going to be looking at moving out our logic that we added in our previous video where we actually now make a network request using our singleton and moving it into a view model. Now you can learn more about MVVM if you've never heard of it in my video within this free course called what is MVVM. So let's get straight into this one. So in our people folder we're actually going to create a new file called people view model. So let's go into our people folder. And then in view models, we're going to create a new one called people view model. Okay, cool, sweet. Now this is the now what we're going to do is actually add in the skeleton for this view model. So let's do this now. Cool. So the reason why I've marked this as final is because I don't want any other class to be able to subclass this people view model. So now this is the skeleton of our view model and our view's job is essentially to listen to this view model for updates and reflect that data. So all this view model is going to do is just handle the business logic and literally allow the view to listen to any changes. Now in Swift UI, you'll actually need to use the observable object protocol and I actually have videos on my channel called observable objects and published in Swift UI, which is also within the Swift UI sessions playlist and my Swift UI and data flow playlist as well on my channel. So now we actually need to add in this type to our view model so that our view is able to actually listen to changes within it. So after this, we're just going to do that colon and then we're going to say observable object Okay, cool. So now we're actually able to listen to updates. So now that we've actually added this in, we need to actually add a property for our view to listen to whenever there is a change. We need to add in a published property since it's what will hold the data that our view will listen to. Now in this case, that's going to be an array of users. So let's just do this now. So within here, you just want to say at published because this is what allows you to listen to the updates, which is the published property wrapper, which I do cover in the Swift UI state and data flow playlist. And then we're just going to say private set. So the reason why we're marking this as private set is because we want you to be able to access this property from outside the view model, but we don't want to give someone the capability to actually change it from outside. So you can only set it within the context of this class's scope. And then we're going to say var users. And then we want the type to be an array of users. Okay, cool. So now that we actually have this in place, what we need to do now is create a function that allows us to actually execute and get our users. So let's just write this out. So this is the function that our view is going to call in order to basically trigger the action to basically listen to updates for the users that the API request returns. So within our fetch users function, we actually want to move our logic from within our people's views on a pair within here. So let's do that now. So let's just essentially just cut this. And then we want to paste this within our people view model like so. Okay, cool. Now, because we're working in the context of a class, it's actually possible because we're using a closure here to get a retained cycle. And in order to fix that, all we need to do is just add in here the weak self. And then now on our users, we need to basically say self with an optional question mark and then assign that to our users. So what's going to happen here now is that we're going to make the request and then if there's a success, we're going to set that to the users within this class or else if there's a failure, we're going to print out the error. So like I said before, this is the business logic within this class here. Now, one thing I did do in the last video is actually mess up the URL on purpose. So let's just remove this X. Now, the next thing that we need to do is actually use this view model within our view because this is now going to be the link between our view and the data that we're going to be requesting. So in order to do that, we're going to use a state object and you can learn more about this by watching my video about state object in Swift UI on my channel. Now let's actually go into our people view and create an instance with a state object to listen to updates to within our people view. So within our people view, we just scroll up below our property 
examples. Above our users here, we're just going to create a state object. Now, if you're wondering what VM stands for, it just simply means view model. And because now we're actually housing everything within our view model, we don't actually need this state property to actually listen to our users anymore. So we can actually just remove this. So if we remove this, we should now get some errors, which is fine. And that's because that doesn't exist anymore. So in order to actually fix this, now all we need to do is just simply just replace anywhere where we use our users with our users within our view model. So let's just replace this for each with our VM dot users call. And now you should see that the build succeeds. So this for each is now going to be listening to the users array within our view model. So not within the local context of this view. And then the final thing we need to do is that in our on appear, we actually need to call our function to fetch our users. So within our on appear, let's just say view model dot fetch users like so. So now when it appears, it's going to trigger this function to actually get the users from the API. So let's just run this within our Swift UI preview and see what happens. So we just hit pause. And if you just rerun it, you'll now see that everything works fine and looks great. But one thing I actually want to do is I actually want to run this on the actual simulator. So let's just run this on the simulator. And if you run this on the simulator, you'll see that it all looks good and it all looks fine. But one thing that you might realize is that you'll now have this little purple warning. So what is this? So let's just go into our people view model and see what this purple warning is. And you'll now see that we actually have a warning here saying that we're actually publishing changes from our background thread, which is not allowed. Now, in the next video, what we're going to do is actually discuss what this means and how we can actually handle this within our Switch UI apps to make sure that we actually don't get this warning and we're actually making sure that we handle this properly. So that's everything in this video. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you left some comments with some feedback below. Also as well, if you enjoyed it, I'd really appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up as well as subscribe to the channel and hit notification bells to get updates for whenever I receive a new, whenever I release a new video. That's everything from me. I'll catch you on a bit. Deuces.